Hi there, it's Chris from uh, Sixth Street Ocarina. Today we're going to talk about some of the stumbling blocks in making ocarinas. Generally, you like an ocarina to be able to play at least one octave. And I think that's a good first goal. Eventually you'll want to extend that range over an octave. But getting that uh, ocarina to play a nice clear um, one octave is a good goal. Um, some of the stumbling blocks that, I, that I've run into and over the years that I've found make a difference are the, the window too large or too small. So that refers to the distance from the airway exit to the labium lip. And the way you judge whether that's right for a particular chamber size is by playing the ocarina when the clay is still moist and judging how hard you have to blow to get that low note to blow away there. If it's got a nice solid amount of volume, not too soft, not too hard, that's going to affect the not only the tonal quality, but the amount of range that you're going to be able to get out of the ocarina. So making those small adjustments in that distance will make a big difference. Um, in general, when you design the body of an ocarina, you don't want it too long and skinny. That can cause problems. And you don't want it too flat because uh, you'll find out in a minute that it affects the drop and different things like that. So generally kind of a roundish type shape. Um, ocarinas are kind of fussy and having the smallest crumb of clay in the wrong place. Here I have just a little bit of clay there um, is gonna affect the sound potentially. Um, so you gotta make sure that your labium edge is nicely beveled underneath and there's no extra things but particularly within the airway there you don't want to look through there and see any little crumbs of clay and then also where your airway exit is should be nice and smooth no over you know no uh, overhangs like that and not too flared out um, <clears throat> so airway too wide too narrow refers to um, the width of the airway in comparison to the window. So you wouldn't want it too wide because that creates turbulence in there and that can affect the sound. You don't want it too narrow because that doesn't uh, take advantage of the whole potential of that particular uh, voicing. Generally, the, the airway should be about the width of the um, <clears throat> window and uh, the sides you know need to kind of match up like that generally i like to taper it down just a little bit there's mixed feelings as to whether a uh, an airway needs to be tapered down or not but in general most ocarina makers do do that um so um holes too near the voicing so in this particular ocarina it's got the thumb holes I wouldn't want to move that hole over and get it too near the voicing window that uh, because of the vibration in there and the fact that you're opening and closing that hole will affect the, the sound of the ocarina. Um, airway too short. In general, depending on the size of the ocarina, I would say at least a half to three quarters of an inch of an airway. If you get them too short, somehow that, that ultimately affects the again the efficiency of that voicing um, and getting them real long is can be a problem but is also very difficult to make so generally in that you know one to two to three inches long on your airways is, is a good uh, place to uh, start with air uh, no drop so this is one of the crucial things that i you know that i'm always looking for when i make an ocarina is that um, <clears throat> when you go to design it, it has to have a certain amount of distance from where the airway exit is and then back here. So in general, let's say this is the wall of that ocarina, you wouldn't want this up like this. What that does is it doesn't allow enough room in this area here for the air to really get going and cr create the vibration that it needs to. Um, and straight up and down is fine and tilted back is fine, but you wouldn't, you don't really want it tilted up this way. Um, that's, that would be no drop. And the distance of the drop, 
you know has to be a certain amount also so that just keeping a good amount of drop around that voicing area will uh, help you improve the quality airway exit not focused refers to the thickness of the airway exit so this area in here we talked about the you know about uh, one and a half thicknesses of a credit card as being a good place to start with if the airway is too narrow airway exit is too narrow it won't allow enough air to get through to create the kind of vibration that you want if it's too wide the air just kind of spews out and it doesn't generate enough i don't know if it's you know speed or whatever but it won't um you know it won't make that uh, vibration happen that you want it to so not too narrow not too wide uh, but again that you know uh that nice that nice airway exit labium lip too high or too low in general um, if you look through the mouthpiece through here you should be able to see that lip in there you have to be able to see that lip in there let's put it that way so when I'm making an ocarina, I'm always looking through the airway um, or the, you know, the mouthpiece and through the airway and you want to be able to see that lip uh, right in there and it's going to be nice and smooth and lined up. The halfway point seems to be kind of critical. If the airway, uh, the labium lip ends up getting too high, that's a problem. But anywhere from halfway down towards the bottom, you still want to see it in there, but that you can play around with you know different configurations there. But generally, you want that below the halfway mark on that uh, um, on that lip. So that's that. This demonstrates uh, some of the building techniques when you go to make your window. Um, be careful not to put it too far this way because that that'll kind of affect that drop and not too far this way when you make your opening because it leaves all this material here or this empty space that is going to make it difficult to get your uh, airway to line up and have it work efficiently and everything uh, a couple of the other things i wanted to mention quick are um, that you know this beveling underneath here making sure you don't have a lot of extra material in this area um, you know by getting in there and carving that out you know you'd be going in with a, a needle tool and working up around this way and just making sure that that a lot of that um, extra clay is is taken out of there and it's slightly beveled in on the inside oh, excuse me uh, and one of the other things I think that a lot of people struggle with when they first make ocarinas is getting the clay to the right consistency for the particular thing that you're going to want to do to it so when you make your airway, at least initially, you want the clay to be pretty soft because otherwise it's going to crack on you. Um, as, as you go do the other processes, whether it's um, making the window, the clay can still be pretty soft. But when you get into making the, the airway exit, the airway itself, the labium lip, finding that nice point where the clay is not too hard, not too soft, it still has to be pliable so you can push down and do, do that carve underneath you don't want the clay to be sticky it makes it hard to get in there and, and do stuff and using either a spray bottle or um, a heat gun to control that the stiffness of the clay is something that const needs to be constantly monitored throughout the making process so i think that's basically it for today if you have any questions or if you have any ideas for a video you'd like to see please uh contact me through through the website and uh thanks for watching bye